Hello, and welcome to Johnny Cash Central, a place where we talk about all things related to the man in black. In this video, I'm going to share my thoughts on Robert Burke Warren's Cash on Cash, Interviews and Encounters with Johnny Cash, published in 2022. But first, a little about the author. Robert Burke Warren is a novelist and a musician. His first novel, Perfectly Broken, was published in 2016 to positive reviews, and his cash book, like I said, was published in 2022. He's married to journalist Holly George Warren, whose interview with Cash and memory of meeting him is included in this compilation of interviews with Johnny Cash. When I started reading this book, I was happy to find that Warren, who didn't interview Cash himself, was deeply familiar with the trajectory of Cash's life and how much his legacy still means to his fans. This knowledge comes through in the introduction written by Warren, but more importantly, it shines in the prefaces to each interview, article, and transcript within the book. Within each preface, Warren contextualizes where Johnny was in his life and career, providing some background on the peaks and valleys of his musical sales, drug addictions, or artistic passions. But what really illuminates the interviews included here and makes this compilation essential is that Warren tracked down the authors of these interviews where possible to get their personal recollections of meeting and chatting with Johnny Cash. Some of the journalists and writers who are interviewed for this book include Roseanne Cash, Johnny Cash's daughter, Bill Friskix Warren, Sylvie Simmons, Anthony DeCurtis, Robert K. Orman, Red Robinson, and Patrick Carr, who interviewed Cash many times for Country Music Magazine, and who co-wrote Cash's second autobiography. The personal memories and anecdotes by those who linked up with Cash over the years to capture his story really paint a picture of the man we know and love. To Dan Gagnea of NPR, Johnny Cash was startlingly generous with a nascent journalist at a small county fair in 1981, especially since Cash's career was slumping. To Anthony DeCurtis, the sheer intelligence of Cash separated him from other big artists he covered, and he was impressed by Cash's thoughtful collaboration with Rick Rubin as the two men reshaped Cash's imagery. Patrick Carr recounts the wild conditions under which he helped write Cash's second autobiography in order to meet the publisher's deadline. Holly George Warren and Sylvie Simmons both offer sympathetic and touching recollections of their visits in 2003 with a frail but funny man who seemed to know his life was nearing an end, yet remained humble about his musical legacy and optimistic and excited about the music projects he was still very passionate about completing. I'll admit, when I started reading this book, I was a bit nervous. Two of the first three articles were transcripts of dialogue from well-known cash videos that have been popular on DVD, one being Town Hall Party in 1958, and the other interview from Pete Seeger's Rainbow Quest show in 1966, where cash fans will know he was not in very good shape. But after a short, bumpy start, the rest of the ride was smooth, with many more obscure entries, and only two or three articles previously appeared in Michael Streisguth's Ring of Fire, The Johnny Cash Reader, which was published two decades before in 2002. The narrative of Cash's life is never dull, and this book makes for a brisk read. Hearing the man in black's own words about his life and career remains vitally important as different authors jostle to distill his legacy and biographies both great and small. And Cash as Patrick Carr notes, naturally spoke like a storyteller. His own words paint pictures, and while Cash could be serious, pontificating on prison reform, drug addiction, and religious conviction, he could be laugh-out-loud funny. Here is banter with June in 1995, when she compares the spiritual charisma of her husband to the sexual charisma of Elvis Presley. Here Cash's witty eulogy for fellow highwayman Waylon Jennings after his death in 2002. 
I'd encourage readers to listen to a few of the interviews included in this book, which can still be found online. But due to Warren's legwork interviewing many of the authors and the inclusion of some genuinely rare interviews, some published for the first time in full, this is essential for a cash fan's shelf.